Hello and welcome to this uh, short application example using MSC Adams. So this was prompted by a support call for a client who is simulating a mechanism that has a, a latching stop within it. Obviously I can't use their geometry for the purposes of this so uh, looking around um, decided to to show you how to simulate the, the sort of spring button stop that you might get on something like a pop-up gazebo where the, um, you're sliding lock engagement. So section view, just to be clear, we have a, a spring button here that sits with recessed within a hole or sits proud of a hole. Um, and we have the collar that slides along the tube. Um, when this slider gets to the point uh, of engaging with this button, pushes the button in till it pops over this lip and then it sits uh, within the recess and the collar can no longer slide or rotate about the, about the pole. Now, this could be done with 3D contact. Um, Adams has supported 3D contact between parasolid bodies for, for a great number of releases. Um, however, that adds a lot of um, additional CPU overhead. You get a lot of chatter, you get a lot of bounce, you get a lot of um, noise in your in your analysis. So it would be nice to have a way of saying, well, this collar can slide up and down until it gets to that point there, at which point it can no longer slide up and down. So that's what I'm going to show you how we can, how to do in this example. So I'm going to show on this very, very simplified set of geometry. We've only got two bodies. I've got a sphere and I've got a pole and I've got an impulse force that basically uh, ramps from um, an 80 newton uh, down to zero newtons over the first 0.2 of a second so it's as if this is spring loaded and we've released it and it's being pushed along the, the pole um, and what I want to do is, is actually stop it at 300 mil so if I run this without any um, additions to the model you can see it just carries on going. So I've got a, a couple of measures. One is the displacement of the ball. So you can see it just carries on to something like minus 900 millimeters in that direction. But you can also see the ball velocity as the, the spring um, effectively unloads and pushes it. It gets to the point where it's reached the maximum extension and therefore there's no longer any force applied and the, the velocity levels off at zero. So I want to be able to make some modifications to this model so that as the ball gets to minus three or travels minus 300 millimeters, it stops dead as if it's latched. And we do that using the sensor capability in Adams. So I've made a few changes to the model. So I've created a marker at the point where I want the, the ball to stop and I've created another joint. So I'm going to go basically switch joints and you'll see why in a minute. So I have this joint here that basically is a, is a cylindrical joint so the ball is free to slide down the pole and spin around the pole and then I've got a duplicate and both of these relate the pole to the ball. Um, so that's what I've added, the, the slider is the top one, the lock is the bottom one, uh, my force remains the same um, and I have a, a general motion that's applied to this joint here, which says um, set the velocity to zero and the displacement to zero, I don't need the times time, um, with an initial displacement of 300 mil. So it's because it's going from here to here, I want it to initialize this, this lock of that joint at um, the minus 300 point. So when this has traveled 300 mil. So, I can create a sensor under design exploration. So I'll just show you the one I've made here. So this sensor is monitor monitoring my um, measure, which is the displacement of the ball. Um, and it triggers when the displacement of the ball is less than or equal to minus 300 millimeters. So as an error tolerance, you can tighten or loosen that. Um, and once that triggers, you set an action. So the way this works is we're going to run uh, an Adams solver script. Uh, and what we do is once this sensor is triggered, so once the ball travels minus 300 units, uh, it terminates the current step in the solver script and then continues to the next step in the solver script. 
So that's all I do. I've got my measure of ball displacement. I've got my, my triggering logic and I've told it what to do once it triggers. So now what I need is a simulation script. So I have a, an Adam Solver simulation script, which I would create here. Um, and the nice thing is there's, it's kind of wizard driven. So once I've got my Adam Solver commands, I can, I can build my events under this menu. So I'll just run you through the steps I've got in here. So um, after the initial uh, output was set up, what I'm doing is I am deactivating the motion. So this was the motion that freezes the, tr the, um, the slider, um, or that freezes the, the lock. Um, so there are two components. So if I show you how that is done, so I'd go down to deactivate, and it brings up this menu here. Um, so if I double click in that, it shows me the motions. And then it shows me that there's motion T3 and motion R3. So I just pick those two. Hit OK. And then, and that would insert that. So it's picking up on the Adams IDs, which is what's needed but via the, uh, the Adams view menu. So I deactivate the motion. I also deactivate this joint. So I don't want them taking part until the ball has reached that point. So my next stage in the script, so after it's deactivated the motion, deactivated the joint, is I'm going to set up the simulation. So I'm running a dynamic simulation with an end time of half a second and uh, 500 steps to go through that. And as you recall, my sensor said when that ball travels minus 300 units, stop the current step. So what will happen is during that 0.5 seconds, the sensor will trigger and it will stop this step, which is my dynamic simulation. So once that's stopped at whatever time that happens, we move on to the next step in the script. So I turn off the sensor so that it's not um, trying to stop the analysis again because the sensor's at 300 units still. So I deactivate the sensor. Then I deactivate this joint. I activate this joint and then I activate the motion to, to freeze that joint. And then I resume my simulation, my dynamic simulation with an endpoint of half a second. So it's going to go through, it's going to start running. When the sensor's triggered, it's going to stop running. It's going to turn off the sensor. It's going to swap the joints and it's going to freeze the new joint. And then it's going to continue to the end of the 0.5 seconds. So if I now run this simulation, see the ball starts to fall. Just close that, so it's hiding what's going on. And when it gets to minus 300 mils, it's displacement to the ball. You can see that the measure stops um, and the velocity of the ball, which had got to its, its maximum velocity, hits that trigger point and it goes down to zero. So I can just pull up the animation control so we can run through that again. So it gets to the minus 300 and the ball stops. And we now have a joint at the location where it stopped, so we're, we're transferring forces, etc., exactly how we want to. So it's as easy as that. Um, if you have any questions, you want to talk about this some more, you want to talk about Adams in general, please don't hesitate to get in touch. There'll be um, contact information at the end of the video. Thanks very much.